Thank you so much, Anne. Uh, every year you just make this better and better, and your shining face and your beauty and your incredible service to the nation, delivering the important message of the environmental movement is unprecedented and so important to all of us. Thank you. I'd like to also thank uh, David Yarnold, who spoke earlier so passionately. Um, David is an extraordinary uh, leader of National Audubon Society. And his show of support for women in conservation is so important to us, and it leads us to allowing us to thrive as we do. David's vision for Audubon is energetic and innovative. It's savvy and sophisticated. And he has made with his mastery of communication a new voice to a century-old institution, invigorating and revitalizing its brand and direction. So David, thank you so much. I have a few thank yous additionally. Um, it's very important to recognize so many people that have so much to do with a day like this. Um, to my awards council, the 30 or so women that comprise our group that uh, acts as a nominating and selection committee for our awards. Our men's council, who, as uh, Anne says, the other half that does play an important part in our role in our lives. Um, and to our luncheon chairs, and especially this year, Laura Donahue, who is a member, really one of our shining lights. <laughs> Laura is not only a member of New York Audubon's board, she is a founding member of our Rachel Carson Awards Council. She's played a pivotal role and she's headed this year's special recognition of women greening food, which has been a monumental task uh, with so many people uh, chosen from across the country. Um, additionally, Laura has given with great generosity the beautiful pink orchids on your table, which we encourage one of you to take home. Um, in a, in a, in, in a, in, a corporate, in a corporate love fest, um, I must identify two corporations here today in particular that are so dear to our hearts. Uh, one is our corporate benefactor and men's council member, Henry Johnson of Fiduciary Trust International, who's now a dear friend. I love Henry. Everyone loves Henry. The other, of course, and every girl loves this corporation as well, is Tiffany and Company. Yes, that little blue box where that color is always welcome. Uh, Tiffany, who designed and donated our gorgeous 18 karat gold Rachel Carson Award medal, to which each of our three honorees today will have around their beautiful necks. Also, as we all know, the staff at Audubon, as you can imagine, have done so much to make this event possible. The mailing lists, the seating charts, the invitations, uh, designs, and rewrites are only one of the many minefields that occur to make a, e a, a luncheon like this occur. So special thanks go to Asha Sheikh, who's the Director of Development for Audubon New York, her delicious and very talented sister, Monica Shake, who is my assistant in Midtown with me. And also uh, this year's uh, Women in Conservation intern, Nadia Ali, who has done so much uh, putting this program together all these months. So I thank them all. I have just a few remarks to make, if I may. Um, it's basically a challenge, I would say, to uh, many of the women in this room, either officially with Audubon or personally in our own lives. 
I do hope that additionally the men here will um, understand this um, as a source of support uh, to give women to the re left and right of them today. I would say this. I would think that the politicization of the term environment has been the most successful hijacking in the history of messaging. Where did we get the idea that the earth is the enemy? How are any of us convinced that clean air or clean water being bad for business was somehow bad for us? How is it possible that healthy food and good soil and healthy seeds was somehow questionable? A poll last year showed that only 37% of Americans thought that the environment even rated as an important issue. It trailed behind issues related to the moral decline in America and the influence of lobbyists. Is it time to kill the messenger? I believe it is. I believe we should start with a new PR firm for the environment altogether, one whose expertise in communication and messaging is beyond anyone's in the field, and that is the American woman. We've heard this before. Biologically, women are wired for this. Evidence shows that the frontal and temporal areas of the woman's brain is more precisely organized and bigger, creating better skills in communication and listening. Women today are armed with a boatload of credentials, too. Many of us know these statistics. 67% of um, women are of, uh, of college graduates are women. 52% uh, of master's degrees are, are gained by women. 47% of medical and JD degrees are given to women today. So beyond doctors and lawyers and Indian chiefs, I believe that women can play the single greatest role in stopping the assault against ourselves and our natural world. With asthma, breast cancer, and autism on the rise, you don't need to be a genius to know that it's not the environment we're saving, but in fact, ourselves. I would propose a national campaign providing women a vehicle to pledge allegiance to the values and principles that protect the environment. And there is no better organization, and I know this from the inside, than the esteemed National Audubon Society. Audubon could be at the forefront of a, of a movement leading an army of women who would demand reasonableness from business, from government, and from the communities we live in. With 800,000 members and nearly 500 chapters, a coalition of women could be organized nationally, wielding huge political influence, creating a na nationwide community, sharing knowledge, fostering relationships, and supporting a small army of young women interns working in multiple regions on locally defined conservation and environmental issues. From the islands in Maine, to the bayous of the Gulf Coast, to the prairies of the Midwest, to the mountains of California, Audubon's National Campaign for Women for the Environment could help change this all-important conversation while promoting environmental leadership among girls and all women. Working with innumerable local and regional partners, this collective effort could unite a group of women with political affiliations across the spectrum to reposition the environmental debate with a new positive note born of collective activism and engagement. A new call to environmental action can blanket this nation, heralded by the women of it. I think, if anyone can, the American woman can get the message out and loud and clear that America is one nation, one people, and that its beloved landscape, water and air, are one bounty that shall be respected, protected, and shared by all. Thank you.